Well, while we were up at Donner Pass walking the old Central Pacific grade, uh, we popped over the hill to Lake Tahoe. I used to live here almost 20 years ago. And I stumbled across something while I was screwing around. I wanted to show it to Karen and, uh, and we want to share it with you guys. So check this out. It's actually quite fascinating. Now, one of the interesting things about North Shore is while it's some of the most expensive homes in the world, there's all these old rundown casinos here. Oh my. They're either out of business or they're practically out of business, it seems. Now, historically, Lake Tahoe has always been a place where the, the rich and famous and powerful hung out. Uh, the, the upper crust. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, a party space, uh, ski resorts, and just all kinds of activity. And always been just for the, the upper crust, the other half, as it were. To me, most intriguing, they have a lot of railroad history up here. That's right. Wow. But that's not what we came to see. This is what we came to see. It's one of those old resorts, in this case, one that's out of business. And this is about as close as we could get. I'm using a long lens. The security guard down there ran us off. The long arm of the law. <laughs> the long arm of the law. There's a good reason why they protect this place and run people off. I've never seen such high security on a building that's been abandoned for about 20 years. When I was living up here, it was open, but just barely. Just a shoestring operation and really, really run down. Well, now that the guard is gone, we can get a closer look. <laughs> the fence is in the way, though. <laughs> well, we'll shoot through the fence and over the fence. What I'm going to try to show you guys isn't the main building here, because that isn't really what's interesting. This is what's interesting. A tough shed? A tough shed. There's, uh, I think, seven of these little cabins with no windows facing the road. And uh, oh, the history in these little cabins over here. And these are the reason for all the security. They're afraid of people breaking into these little cabins. But why? Why indeed, because as Paul Harvey would say, that's the rest of the story. Now inside the hotel, this is the celebrity showroom. And they used to do a film festival in here. And uh, back when I was living here, they conned me into being a judge for the film festival. <laughs> Silly them. That sounds like fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, goofy little film festival. Well, anyway, one day I'm in here noodling around on the grand piano, and this guy comes up to me, one of the owners of the hotel, and says, you know you're playing Frank Sinatra's piano, don't you? Well, uh, what? Well, he then proceeded to tell me the story of the Cal Neva. Oh my heck. Anyway, the, the main lodge was built about a hundred years ago. And during prohibition, uh, it was a, a known watering hole. Oh, okay. <laughs> Casino and you could sneak yeah. a drink. And uh, it, it was just a little cabin up here, this, this little lakeshore lodge. And they had these funny little cabins that you could rent if you wanted to stay up here. And the California-Nevada border ran right through the middle of the building. There it is, that line running through the fireplace. <laughs> That's the California-Nevada state line, hence oh. the name Calneva. Oh boy. Well, apparently it was extremely popular through the 1940s into the 1950s. But uh, everything changed all of a sudden in, uh, I believe, the late 1950s when Frank Sinatra bought it, or ostensibly bought it, because it turns out it wasn't really him that bought it. Oh. <laughs> anyway, he built the Frank Sinatra showroom. Now, Sinatra was well known as, as the, the lead-off member, the chairman of the board of the so-called Rat Pack. Oh. And if you don't know who the Rat Pack is, there's a link in the description and go chase that down because there's a lot more history to it than you might know. Anyway, these guys would come up here to the Calneva and perform in that little tiny room, mostly to an invited audience. Nobody ever got paid and you had to have an invite to get in because it's a really small room to, to garner talent like this. 
it was in fact their place at the lake. They came up here just to screw around, no other reason. And they built a little supper club for them and their friends. Those five guys, boy, what icons, really. God, I'll tell you, the biggest talent in Hollywood. Now, Sinatra built this building to the left, that's the showroom, and he also built some hotel rooms uh, at the back there, and he kind of gave the place his look, if you will. And because they had a hotel tower, well, they, they didn't need the little cabins anymore. They didn't bother to tear them down, they just sort of let them fall down of, on their own. After uh, Sinatra gave the business, well, actually the state took it away from him, but uh, uh, while I was living there, all these little cabins got torn down because they were just literally ramshackle and falling down. Sinatra had no interest in them anymore. However, the cabins on the California side of the hotel, well, the Rat Pack had their eye on those. They staked them out as their little personal living spaces. Oh, a little getaway. Little getaway. Each of these belonged, well belonged, you know, was occupied by one of, one of the Rat Packers. Each claimed their own little cabin over wow. here. And this particular cabin belonged to Marilyn Monroe. Oh, serious? I mean, she was technically part of the Rat Pack, but a lot of people don't know that. Again, there's a lot of history to it. And there were a lot of other people who were sort of hangers on that aren't really well known. But uh, they also had a larger cabin over here that was like three bedrooms. And uh, when they had guests up, well, uh, the guest artists or whoever could stay in the larger cabin and they had this little private patio area. Now all of this completely separate from the hotel, so the hotel guests couldn't even see them over here. I see. Or, or not. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> so they could just come up here and be themselves. That'd be nice. Now here we have Frank Sinatra screwing around with his newest toy. He bought a Polaroid land camera. You remember those? Those are fun, yes. <laughs> right there. And, and Marilyn and he are watching the photo form here on the photograph. Isn't like, that neat? They were like magic. And, and of course, you had to shake the little picture. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, this is Marilyn's cabin. Uh, in fairness, that's not the original furniture. But the, uh, the owners, they didn't quite know what to do with all this, so they were renting these cabins out, and they stuck just some garden variety furniture in here. And, uh, and they'd take people in. That's how I got to see the cabins. They'd, just, they'd charge you five bucks and, and they'd take you through all the cabins and you could see it. Uh, this is Frank Sinatra's cabin. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Now, Frank's cabin had a special feature that the other ones didn't. There was a stairway in Frank's cabin that went into the ground and into a tunnel that ran the whole length of the hotel casino. Oh my. And, and so again, while I was living up there, they, they'd take you down here for a couple of bucks. You could, they'd take you down into the tunnels and you could see the secret tunnel under the hotel. And this way, uh, the Rat Pack could move between the celebrity showroom and their cabins without cutting through the casino. Well, that kind of makes sense. It, it makes sense. But there was also a group that would stay in the guest rooms that uh, you could, well, they were avoiding the police. Oh. oh. Or should I say the federal authorities? Because if they were seen in the casino, people were gonna lose business licenses. And anyway, there were other reasons to hide out down in the tunnels here. Check out this goofy carpet. That's the original hotel carpet. It looks like casino carpet. The other end came up into a secure area at the other end of the hotel. And from there, there was yet another stairway that went up to the second floor above the celebrity showroom. And that was a private party room for the people who were avoiding the federal authorities. Oh, oh, oh dear. They had their own little private space above. And from up there, they could watch the show without anybody being able to see them hanging out up there. Wow. I guess you could call these guys the alternate Rat Pack. Oh! <laughs> and here we have Sam Giancana, Frank Sinatra's very good friend, 
and the actual owner of the hotel. I see. Uh huh. And he was one of the guys who had to hang out in the private party room. Well-known Chicago gangster. Wow. And if he'd been seen in the casino, they'd have lost their gambling license through the state of Nevada. So he and his friends had to stay in the shadows, as it were. But down below, the party raged on. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it was a blast at all times. And uh, I mean, can you imagine a kind of a private celebrity showroom where these guys just sort of performed for each other, maybe tested out new bits? I don't know what, you know, and they're invited friends. That is just amazing. And the joke was, we perform for our supper. We don't get paid. Oh. But and uh, uh, can you imagine what it would be to attend that? Uh, I can only imagine, but I Jeez. can be there. <laughs> <laughs> And the invited guests were, you know, the who's who of Hollywood and politics, the rich and the powerful. Wow. And upstairs, the wise guys. <laughs> <laughs> Here we have Frank with uh, the wise guys. Oh. Some of the most famous mobsters in the history of mobsterdom. Uh, wise guys, as it were. Here's Marilyn. She dated Sam Giancana for a while. Oh. They That's were right. were an item. Well, she was an item with everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she was. For a while. Now, speaking of the rich and powerful, this is Joseph Kennedy. Oh. And he had casinos and connections with casinos in Cuba. And after Fidel Castro rose to power, like a lot of people, he moved his money to Nevada. Here he is with his two oldest sons, uh, Edward and Jack, on okay. the left. Okay, wow. And Jack hooked up with uh, Sinatra and became part of the Rat Pack. Oh, my. And uh, they joked and said, I guess we'll have to change the name to the Jack Pack. <laughs> but uh, uh, Jack Kennedy was, uh, was a ma Now, after Kennedy was elected president, he had to separate himself from these guys. No more hanging out with Sinatra and the wise guys for obvious reasons. And here we have the six most infamous photographs ever taken at the Calneva. This is Marilyn with Peter Lawford at, at one of the cabins, just sort of hanging out. Picture was taken by Buddy Greco on his camera. Uh, the other uh, shots on this roll of film were in the World Trade Center. He never showed them to anybody and they, they went down with the World Trade Center. That's uh, Buddy Greco on the right. Somebody else have obviously grabbed the picture. Uh, but this is where Marilyn met Buddy, and, and uh, suddenly she decided he was the new it guy. And she started coming on to him really, really strong. Wow. Wow. And, and he was the newest member of the Rat Pack. Ah. And, uh, but check this out. If looks could kill. No kidding. Sinatra is not very happy about uh, Buddy and uh, Marilyn kind of throwing herself at Buddy this way. Lots of people have theorized just exactly what was on Sinatra's mind here, but we'll, we'll never know. Probably never. Probably never. I mean, but geez, look yeah, at he... that. Look at that look. <laughs> <laughs> well, use your imagination. And anyway, later that night, as the party raged in the celebrity showroom, uh, very late at night, Marilyn stumbled through the main entrance, just stoned out of her mind, and the whole room turned around, and everyone went silent, and she exclaimed, what the F do you people think you're looking at? Oh, my. But she was completely high on barbiturates and alcohol, and just about died. They... They rushed her back over to her cabin and they called in doctors and uh, oh, they were able to get her stabilized. And, uh, but it was, it was close. It was a near death experience for her. They weren't sure if it was intentional or not, but uh, they got her back to her house in Southern California. And four nights later, she took an overdose again. Oh. This time taking four times the lethal dose. Oh. And that was, that was the end of Marilyn. So sad. Uh, we'll never know what demons 
possessed her, what, what haunted her. But a lot of people don't know it all started up at the lake. Mm. They, they kind of kept that quiet. Right. But everybody heard about how it finished. And just a few months later, Jack Kennedy got a bullet to the brain in Dallas, Texas. <sighs> Most of us that were alive then remember that day. Jeez. Um, just unbelievably close to Marilyn's death. And uh, Sam Giancana, years later, got a bullet to the brain as well. Wow. In his case, you'd just have to call that an occupational hazard. Mm. Lead poisoning, uh, just part of the job when, uh, you're, when you're a Chicago gangster. I wow. guess. So nothing surprising there. Nothing really sad either, I guess. Enter Larry Ellison. Oh. He's like, what, the CEO, president something of Oracle? Oracle. Oracle. Mm -hmm. Lots lots of money. You know, he's got a Kirkham Cobra. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> in our show on Kirkham Cobras, they were actually building his car while I was down there shooting video. And that was all top secret. They said, you can't, you can't tell anybody or anything until he gets his car. Well, he's got it now. Anyway, this is his vision for the hotel. That's quite a vision. It, uh, it's quite a vision. It'd be really neat if he can pull it off. And they started on it, but for some reason... There it sits. There it sits. And there's all these you know, conspiracy theories and rumors going around that there's too many weird names on the title and legal problems and, mm. and you know, spies and I don't know. Ghosts in the closet. Literally, literally. They might want to call it the overlook. Yeah. <laughs> but for some reason, the whole thing's just sitting here and Larry Ellison's responsible for all this security. Well, uh, there you have it. <laughs> what a story. What a story. Well, if you, if you haven't been over to the channel, pop on over to the channel. And if you, uh, you want to share this, do share. And if you're not a subscriber, here you go. <laughs> well, we're not sure how you found this very corrupt story on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> but we hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Sunday as we drive around.